This video will demonstrate how to adjust the timing of the Cunic quilting machine. The quilting machine timing may need to be adjusted if you experience persistent problems such as skip stitches, looping, or extra long stitches. In the majority of cases, these problems are not caused by timing and can be fixed by checking for another solution. Do not attempt to adjust the timing of the machine until you've checked for all of the following possible solutions. Make sure the machine is threaded correctly. Check the bobbin tension and adjust if necessary. Check the upper tension and make any necessary adjustments there. Make sure the sewing machine needle is placed all the way in the needle assembly. Check if the needle is bent or burred and replace if necessary. Make sure that the needle is centered in the hole of the needle plate and not hitting or rubbing against the side. Clean the tension discs of any debris or lint. Clean the bobbin case and assembly of any built up lint. Make sure that the bobbin case spring is not damaged or missing. Make sure the bobbin edges are free from any burrs and replace if necessary. Make sure the bobbin is threaded correctly through the bobbin case. Check the hopping foot position and pressure. If after checking these points the problem persists, you may need to adjust the timing of the machine. First, make sure that the machine is powered off. Next, remove the bobbin case and bobbin. To make seeing the steps of this video easier, we've removed the hopping foot. This is not a required step. Using the small screwdriver that came with the machine, unscrew all four screws around the needle plate and then remove the needle plate. Much of the timing will be determined by the position of the needle scarf. The needle scarf is the notch in the needle shown here. Marking the center of the needle scarf can make timing the machine easier. Here we are using an ordinary felt tip marker. Also important to the timing is the position of the hook in the hook assembly. As the hook assembly rotates counterclockwise, the hook is visible after the needle has reached its lowest point and begins to come back up. The hook is highlighted here. The goal of the timing process is to center the hook with the needle scarf and have the hook as close as possible to the needle without touching it at any point in the up and down cycle. It is also important that this position is achieved at the right time in the up and down cycle of the needle. The position happens right after the needle has reached its lowest point here as the hook is rotating counterclockwise and the needle is going up. It is at this point that we will adjust the hook assembly to be centered with the needle scarf. Through the rest of the video, we'll call this the timing position. This is the position we want the needle and hook to be in when we adjust the timing. To complete the rest of the process, it is highly recommended that a flashlight or other light be used to make the hook area more visible. It is important that the hook assembly and set screws can be seen through this hole. If you haven't already done so, move the needle to the timing position now, where the hook is centered with the needle as it begins to go back up. With the needle in this position, a set screw should now be visible in this hole. With the needle in the correct position, we will first rotate the hand wheel until a third set screw is visible in the hole. This allows us to work back the other way to correct the needle position as we loosen the set screws. To loosen the set screws, use the 2mm Allen wrench that came with the machine. Rotate each set screw counterclockwise, but be sure not to completely remove the screws. After the first set screw is loosened, rotate the hand wheel back towards the correct needle position until the second screw is visible. Now loosen the second set screw. Rotate the hand wheel again to the last set screw and the needle should now be in position next to the hook. Now loosen the last set screw. With the set screws loosened, the hook assembly can now be rotated side to side and adjusted back and forth. Position the hook so that it is centered with the needle scarf and as close as possible to the needle without touching it. When the hook and needle are in the correct position, you may need to hold the hook assembly to keep it from moving as you re-tighten the set screw through the hole. Before tightening the other two set screws, 
Rotate the needle a full cycle to make sure the needle does not hit or brush against the hook assembly at any point. Then continue to tighten the other two set screws in the hook assembly. Your timing is now adjusted. When replacing the needle plate, there is only one correct way it should be placed. If the needle plate is rotated or put in an incorrect way, the needle will not be centered with the hole in the needle plate, and it will hit or brush against the sides of the hole. Make sure that the needle plate is centered in the hole for the correct needle plate position, and reattach it with four needle plate screws. A quick test can now be done by sewing on a piece of practice cloth. Start at low stitching speeds and listen for any clicks that might indicate the needle is hitting the hook assembly. If you should at any time need more assistance, please contact the Grace Company at 1-800-264-0644.